Welcome to this video. This video is an introductory video to a series of videos that will follow in which I will be going through in some detail Philip Jourdain's translations into English of George Cantor's 1895 and 1897 articles on transfinite numbers. The English translations of these two works appeared in 1915 in a book titled Contributions to the Founding of the Theory of Transfinite Numbers. This work is now public domain and is freely available to download on Internet Archive. In order to get the most from these videos, I'd strongly recommend that you download a digital copy of this work or obtain a physical copy. In this series of videos, I simply want to present a historically important piece of mathematics that is nowadays often overlooked in a way to make it more accessible to a wider range of people. I'll be going through each section of the two combined articles by Cantor in translation and clarifying any details as I go and hopefully making the articles a little easier to understand and highlighting some of the easily overlooked and more nuanced points. I'd like this series of videos to be a kind of reference for these two articles. I'm not sure if the videos will be in-depth or scholarly enough to be considered as a commentary, but they'll go into reasonable detail. I won't be making any attempts to update or correct any of the shortcomings in these articles. I'll be presenting things in roughly their original form, and I'll be taking for granted many of Cantor's claims, even if they've subsequently been shown to be incorrect. I'll make a few brief comments here and there, particularly with respect to results which concern what is now known as the axiom of choice. A refutation of Cantor, though, will be for another video. I'll be going into quite considerable detail on some points of the articles, and these videos are not some kind of book review. There will be a lot of material to cover which may make it necessary for you to pause the video from time to time, to re-watch sections of some of the videos, or possibly re-watch whole videos and maybe be prepared to make your own notes, depending on what level of understanding you wish to have. The videos are not meant to be watched passively, obviously you can watch them passively if you wish, but to get the most out of them, I recommend that you be prepared to engage a bit more with the contents of the videos and the articles themselves. For a proper understanding then, as with most things, it will require a considerable time investment. Please don't expect to understand everything in a single viewing. Give yourself sufficient time to think about the concepts and to absorb the information. I haven't dumbed down the material and I haven't made the videos to just cover the highlights and so there is much to take in. I've personally read these two articles several times and I still notice things now that I haven't noticed before in previous readings. The first few sections of these two articles and hence the corresponding videos will be establishing the fundamental concepts that will be used throughout. Of course, you can start on whichever video you choose, but please be aware that, although it may not be necessary to remember every single little detail, it is important to understand these initial concepts quite thoroughly in order for the rest to make sense. The videos are meant to be watched in order. The ideas and interpretations in the videos are my own. I can't guarantee 100% accuracy of everything, and nor can I guarantee completeness. Some of the more philosophical aspects of the articles will clearly be more subjective and open for debate. If it's felt that I've missed anything or misinterpreted anything, then I'll be very happy to receive feedback on this. There'll be one video per section across the two articles. Some sections will require more detailed explanations than other sections, so some of the videos may be considerably longer than others. I won't comment on every single line or even every page. Some things are clear enough already that I have nothing further to add to what's already there. If that's the case, then I may pass over some parts in silence. Thus, my failure to speak on a particular theorem or proof is a sign that I personally consider it to be more or less self-explanatory, and any further explanation would be nothing more than unnecessary filler material. On the other hand, there may be occasions when I spend considerable time explaining a few words or a few symbols if I want to draw attention to a particular aspect. Throughout the videos, I'll be trying to use the terminology used by Cantor, and I'll resist as much as possible formulating things in more modern terminology. The reason for this is that I believe that any attempt to reformulate Cantor in modern terminology is akin to translating from one language to another, which often results in loss of nuance and a potential loss of meaning. Bearing in mind that this has already been translated into English from the original German, only if I feel that it's absolutely necessary to do so will I introduce more modern terminology. We have to be conscious of the fact that Cantor's style of presentation is possibly a bit more informal than might be considered acceptable by modern day standards. Cantor isn't known for having a particularly formal style. I'll usually try to keep to a more informal style when filling out some of the details of the proofs in the videos. 
As I work through the pages of the articles, I'll show on the screen the page or pages currently under consideration, and will highlight with a blue box the part of the page which is being discussed. In this way it should be easy for you to find the appropriate part of a video that would be most relevant if you need help with even just a part of a section. Occasionally, if more space is required to present the details of a proof and so forth, then I'll cut away to an almost blank screen. When presenting the details of a proof, I may simply present the written details without speaking, and other times I may provide additional spoken clarification for the written details if necessary. The videos for this series will be uploaded over a period of several weeks, with one or two new videos appearing each week, until the final video has been uploaded. If you'd like to know exactly when new videos are uploaded to my channel, then please subscribe to my channel and hit the alerts button. If you have any suggestions for videos on other mathematical works that you would like to see appear on my channel, then please feel free to let me know. I'll try to put something together if I feel that I'm able to do so, but obviously I may have to decline some suggestions for reasons of time, or simply that I don't know enough about a particular topic.